what is the great sports myth and why is it important? This is a concept that I developed over the past 45 years of looking at the connections between sports, culture, and society. And as I've gone around and and asked critical questions and gotten and tried to get other people to ask critical questions about sports, I've confronted a lot of resistance. And and I haven't been really effective in, in many ways, in, in some small ways here and there, I have been. But for the most part, people resist asking those critical questions. And I've tried to figure out why. And the explanation that I've come up with is kind of simplistic, but uh, I think it makes sense. And, and that is that a lot of people have two major beliefs about sport. One of those beliefs is that sports are essentially pure and good, and that people who participate in them share in that purity and goodness. Because of that, there's no need to ask critical questions about sports because sports are already the way they're supposed to be. And it's almost like uh, uh, some supernatural authority has said, This is the way sports ought to be, and this is how you ought to play them, organize them, and give them meaning. And people are unwilling to ask questions about that. So that creates major problems for the sociology of sport because we're asking questions about those kinds of things, critical questions. But the great sport myth really undermines asking and reflecting on those kinds of questions. This whole unquestioned belief that sport builds character, for example, that that really has a 150 year history in, in Europe and the United States and has spread around the rest of the world, uh, really overlooks all sorts of, of aspects of sports and sport participation that that lead to something other than than character building in the sense that most people define it. So, uh, so for example, uh, when people believe the great sport myth, they're unwilling to even ask a question about the probability that sport may lead people down the wrong path in some cases when it comes to their behavior, their values, their norms. Uh, and and how they interact with other people. And the other aspect here that's really important is that people believe that sport can solve not just individual problems, but societal problems, problems related to deviance, problems related to uh, how young people are growing up in in, uh, disadvantaged circumstances and under-resourced circumstances. And they feel that sports can solve all those problems, race problems, gender problems, economic problems. And that's, and that's really an oversimplification. I think it's almost the American way where if you see something that starts to show some benefit, you go all in and it's the, it's the cure-all for everything. <laughs> right. And it affects a lot of our political and economic decisions and family decisions, school decisions about how, how we're going to organize uh, our lives. And, you know, we've, we've dedicated literally tens of billions of dollars uh, to the, the building of stadiums that are used by billionaires and athletes, many of whom are certainly not economically deprived, uh, to boost their resources. And we say that, that those expenditures are paying off for the common good. But I think we need to ask some critical questions about that. You know, when a, when a city spends $500 million on a stadium uh, and, to, and, and say that they're doing that for the public good, we maybe should be asking how that $500 million could be spent in other ways. Could it build 50 major recreation centers around a metropolitan area where people would be able to be physically active themselves rather than spending 20 hours a week sitting in front of a TV, watching other people play sports and forming your identities around those teams and those athletes rather than around the physical activities that you might be playing them yourselves and making you healthier and bringing your family and community together in ways that are much more meaningful than sitting around watching a bunch of elite athletes play sport. What, what are the benefits that they're touting when they 
say that this is going to help the whole community? What they tout is that it's going to help the physical development of, of a community and uh, and raise the standard of living of people in that community. Uh, it's going to bring people together, develop kind of a community identity that's that's going to pay off in the long run. And uh, and it's going to create jobs and economic out positive economic outcomes. But if you were to take that uh, that hypothetical case of spending a half a million or five hundred million dollars in other ways, you could create ten times as many jobs at least uh, if you if you if your intent was to create jobs. And one of the other problems is that that the people who benefit from the expenditure of that $500 million are oftentimes people who are already powerful and, and, uh, and heavily resourced uh, on their own. And many times those stadiums are built in ways that clean out low income neighborhoods and, and displace people and change uh, uh, their their lives in negative ways. So, so you know, we have to look at all the different aspects of that expenditure rather than just what the political and economic leaders in a community are calling our attention to. Mm -hmm.